Buongiorno. Good morning. It is day 47 on the Via Francigena, and today we are walking from Vitrala to Sutri. The stage is 24 kilometers, but for pure self-preservation, because the high today is 103. It's going to be 90 degrees by 10 a.m. We're going to take the SR2 as long as humanly possible. Uh, it's That's it, going to cut about uh, six kilometers off yeah. of our walk. But more importantly, right now at 6.30, which is the earliest we have started the entire trip. And I got a lot of advice from people in the Via Francigena group about starting even in the dark. And honestly, we would have started even earlier, but we um, forgot to pay last night. Seriously, we made a rookie mistake four days before Rome. Um, but if we would have paid last night, we would have been gone. At our hotel. At our place. Um, so as soon as she got there this morning, we you know, paid and left. But we'll leave even earlier the next few days. We're doing the best that we can. You know, if you've been following along, you know we've said pilgrims on holiday. Now we're in pilgrims on holiday on self-preservation. <laughs> um, so we're doing Get the best that we can. So I uh, hope you enjoyed today's walk. May not be a lot of views from the trail. We're just gonna get to Sutri. And it's supposed to be beautiful there, so we'll have the afternoon. Yeah. Nope, still on the highway. Our first purple grapes though, that's exciting. We have left the SS2 back onto the Via Francigena for just a moment, um, mostly because we wanted to walk through this hazelnut orchard. So if you've ever wanted to know where one of the ingredients of your Nutella came from, someplace just like this. We've saved two kilometers by walking the road. So far. So far. And it actually has had a sidewalk most of the time. There was only a one time where it didn't, but I, I didn't feel unsafe. No, it's been very easy to walk on. Um, and lots of little, we, we passed through two or three little towns. Yeah, lots of places for food. So that was a nice uh, option. And the other reason for taking this little detour back onto the Via is to walk past the towers of Orlando. Orlando, or Roland, was one of Charlemagne's favorite generals. And he came through this area in about 800. And uh, the towers, though, actually were not his. They predated him. They were Roman. But we'll see those in just a minute. So here is the first of the three towers of Orlando. So it is believed that two of the towers are actually Roman funeral monuments and that the third tower is from a 10th century church. I don't know which one this is, but there's a sign coming up. So here's the first tower again. We think this is the Roman tower. Here's the second tower, which definitely does not look as old and looks more like a church bell tower. This is the third tower. We cross around it. It definitely looks more like the first one. in the village of Kampranica. Cool little town. Yes, we were contemplating staying here, but decided it just wasn't gonna work in our days. So we decided we have to push on to Sutri. This would be a good overnight stop though. Yeah.
Via goes off this way to the right. Sorry. We are gonna stay on the SR2. We have 4.1 kilometers to Sutri and our lodging. Michelle, how much further does the VF have? Uh, yeah, you asked me too fast. Um, four miles. So, so. 4.1 kilometers or four miles. Right. Uh, definitely the 4.1 kilometers is going to win. And it doesn't look like we're missing anything because they both meet up before the um, archaeological park. Um, so it, it's not the best walking. I mean, there's no no shoulder. There's no shoulder for a long while. Uh, there is decent shade on the road and a lot of cars. the cars provide some wind. The pavement's starting to get hot, but it is um, Still 1130 be... and we have got to get to Sioux Tree. And it's going to be much faster to go this way. Yeah, we need to take the faster route. So let's go talking and go. Andiamo. One of the few quiet moments we have had on this road the entire day. Two kilometers to Sioux Tree. Not a recommended route for the weak hearted. No. We've had two or three moments where we both took a deep breath and prayed. But worth it on a day like today. We are getting off of the SR2 and walking up so, into Sutri. Okay. So let's talk rules of the road. So first of all, the leaving Vitrella, the first like five kilometers, four kilometers were great. No issues whatsoever. There were sidewalks. We saved ourselves two kilometers. We went back on the VF and- To see the Orlando Towers. And the hazelnut trees. Um, so that was smart. This last bit, this last four kilometers- Really from when we got back on after the tower. Yes, and the town was? Uh, Cap Capranica. There you go. Um, we had to walk on the shoulder. The thing and is- it, there's no shoulder. There's no shoulder. And there's always thorns on the side of the road. So it's dicey. However, we did our research about reading, uh, I'm sorry, we did our research about walking on the road. We know that we're supposed to, just like in the United States. The Italian law the says. The Italian law says that we're supposed to walk against traffic unless there's a blind corner. You have to walk the safest route possible. So that's what we've been doing. If it's a blind curve, we may cross the road as safely as possible, but we walk going into traffic. We did that because we did our research and because we're comfortable with it. We do not by any means recommend or endorse going off the Via Francigena. It's your pilgrimage. Do it your way. Now, you can also walk on SS or SR roads. Those are allowed, and those are often the bike routes. Yes. The A roads, which is the Autostrasse, that's like the main interstate highways. Yeah. No pedestrians, no bikes on those. Yeah. So do your research and make sure you're smart and do only what's comfortable for you. Andiamo a gelato. <laughs> Let's go. missing from this picture you're right gelato oh wait there it is
walking back to our lodging for tonight. Carefully. And, yeah, carefully, because oh as you can see behind us, these hills are no joke. And there's dog poop in the middle. <laughs> After visiting Viterbo, Vitrella, and now Sutri, I can understand where Dante came up with the concept of his seven mm. levels of hell. I think we go left. Because these towns are just crazy about the way they are carved out of a hillside. That's the road that we're on walking further downhill. This is the road that our lodging is on. And by the way, with all these giant stone buildings that have been here for like 700 plus years, Google Maps does not pick up a signal well through four foot thick walls, just so you know. But Michelle has found our lodging. I will say, it's a 10 out of 10. So this lodging is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, we could show them a tour. It's a 10 and out of 10. And it is, uh, Michelle is better than Google, just so you know. Quick tour of Radici Etrusche, or the House of the Etruscans. You're letting out the cool air, come on. So the first thing we have to do, after climbing down that hill, is climb back up it. <laughs> so we are in a shared room. We have a sitting area. Kitchen. And here's our bedroom. Most importantly, we have working air conditioning. Well, don't turn it on yet. But, um, <laughs> ignore the mess. Our room could. sleeps four. Yeah, we could sleep more. This bed is comfortable. We'll come this way. Plus two bunk beds, which also double as a clothesline today. But most importantly, there's this. Look at how pretty the shower is. Michelle, tell them why this shower is so amazing. Step into it. This shower is so amazing for two reasons. One, I have elbow room. And number two, it stays the same temperature the entire time I take a shower. That may seem like a small thing, it's but it is not the norm. It's huge. It's huge. I'm just saying, a, it's the trifecta. A comfortable bed, a shower that is um, the same temperature more than anything, I don't care how small it is, and a bed that's comfortable, I said that, air conditioning, those three things. And because we're hiking in the heat, a refrigerator where we can cool our water bladders. But for now, I have to go to the bathroom. the amphitheater because there was music playing doing sound check for a concert tonight but it was really cool it was very cool i hope the video kind of shows just how big it was yeah i was gonna say you can't imagine the perspective until like we i saw you from like across the way and i was like oh my gosh you're so small yeah but the oldest 
right? Well, it was from the Imperial Age. I'll have to look up when that is. I'll put it down below. But what's um, the, it's the oldest amphitheater. It's one of the oldest, um, carved especially carved from the rock. So this wasn't built. It was carved out of the hillside. And you could see it. I mean, you could see. I could. I can imagine. Imagine the seats. And they're just as uncomfortable as many stadiums <laughs> in the United States. Now, what's behind us now is part of the necropolis. So these are also Etruscan carving areas, and this would have been a cemetery. You want to go inside of him? I would love to go inside and look around. But they around. won't let him. But there's a fence. Boo! We're rule followers, so. I am. All right, well, let's take a look. This is the entrance to the Mithram, which is unfortunately locked today. Inside this door is an ancient Etruscan temple that was in the 700s converted to a Christian church. And it goes back into the rock about 30 meters. Buongiorno. Good morning. It is day 48 on the Via Francigena. Shh, it's early. It is early. It's only a few minutes after 6 a.m., but it's <laughs> going to be 101 degrees today. Some people say that's not that early. I know. It's early for us, and yeah. uh, we, we're trying to get moving. We got 24 kilometers today. Yeah. Should be a really nice walk. We're starting here in Sutri, and we're moving on to Campania, New Roma. Campania. The Roma. Yes, we're almost there. This is exciting. All right, let's go. Let's do this. We are over three kilometers in now. Yep. We are not walking the road today. I mean, we're walking on a road. <laughs> a couple of reasons. I think the first one that's most important is we didn't come here to walk the road. Definitely. So we came here to walk the Via Francigena. And see the sights along the way. Yeah, sometimes we walk the road simply because it's so hot or a route is so much longer that it just doesn't make sense to us. Yeah, there were days that we took the road because we maybe were cutting off five, eight kilometers or we were cutting out big hills that we just didn't want to climb. And there was nothing, according to the guidebook, to see along the route. Yeah, so we're weighing all of those options. Today, it actually would have been longer to take the road and it looked like it wasn't pleasant. Yeah. So what we do is we take Google, Google satellite, Earth satellite, whatever, and look at the path. And that's how we make the decision if it's even practical. So we're gonna walk the trail today. For better or for worse. <laughs> It is 10.30 on the nose. We started walking a few minutes after six. So we are three hours and 41 minutes into our walk because we took two breaks. Thank goodness, it is hot out here. We are at 14.93 kilometers. And Michelle, the temperature is? 88. 
The sun is so hot that right now I wish you could see the sweat that's dripping off of my arms. The hiking poles are hot to the touch. Running down my legs, running into my eyes. As it has been so many times on this pilgrimage, it is hot. The sun umbrellas help, um, but man, a breeze would feel so good right about now. Yeah, it's hot. The ironically, is 103. Ironically, we're walking right now towards a place called Mount Gelato, which has a waterfall, but uh, unfortunately, I don't think they have ice cream. I don't know. I've heard there are restaurants, so well, I'm gonna hold my fingers crossed. If there's ice cream, I'm getting a milkshake because I don't think they can make ice cream right now. You mess up my log. I'm not gonna mess up your log. Ooh. No, this is not the Via Francigena. Well, actually, the Via Francigena is right there. I mean, it's kind of right over there somewhere. But uh, the Via Francigena does not go through the water, no. literally. So, uh, but we are at Monte Gelato. <laughs> there is no ice cream, but there was granite. It which was. was pretty good. That's like yeah. Italian ice, I guess. Um, it's pretty good. How many kilometers in are we now? Like 18? Oh, no, no. 18? 18. Okay. We have, we have six left to go. And had. it's... Uh -oh. Had. It's the hot. Oh, it's all the hot. It's all the hot. It's all the hot. And uh, I'm developing... Are you ready for this? A freaking blister. <laughs> we get to First Rome one she's in three had days. Um, um, developing a blister on my pinky toe. It's really hot. And also, I think I have something going on with my water bladder. So I'm out of water. And so we've got, we've got multiple problems today. So Every we, day is an adventure. We've called for a car to come and get us. It's going to be a little while. So we are sitting here in this very, very cold water. I don't know where this water is coming from, but yeah. it is cold. Honestly, I wish I had my bathing suit on. I'd jump in. Yeah. It's not that cold. So uh, that's our view for right now. And uh, we're just gonna sit here and wait for this car. Because mm -hmm. no wind to stop for the day. And guess what? I'm pretty sure the Pope is not gonna mind that we took a car for six kilometers. I don't even think he'll know. We have arrived at Ostella Gertrude, which is where we're staying for tonight here in Campagna di Roma. After kind of uh, the car, the taxi dropped us off down that way a little bit. It's just a little off the Via Francigena before the end of the stage. Um, we walk down this little walkway. Excuse me while I dodge. Oh, Canterbury, 1,700 kilometers. Roma, 43 kilometers. Buonasera. Buonasera, lei. So we come into this little courtyard. There's an apple tree here. Don't think any of them are quite ripe yet. We have a place to do our laundry. We have a clothesline. And this is our little bungalow for the night. Why, hello, Michelle. Hi. You know how we've talked about van life before? We've considered van life. We've considered going in a van through all of Europe. We have our little van. <laughs> it's that small. Come in, I'll show you the tour. I think our van life friends will be like, this place is huge. I know. Okay, I will stand on this end. So we have, we have a bunk bed. Nose I've goes felt, for top. No, uh, I'm getting the bottom of them, <laughs> so have it. We do have a table. Um, we have a little kitchen here. Oh, oh. I just ran Ryan. into something. Ryan, that's our food. That's our so kitchen. she did say that we have what I we need. I need to trade places with you. Oh. Excuse me. Sorry. I mean, I feel like it is a, a good size van, but I need better seating. Um, 
she said we have everything here to make some pasta. Or some um, soup. Pasta or soup. I mean, we do have quite a few. We have more options here than we did in Court St. Andrea, where we had lots of places to sit, but very little food. The only so, unfortunate thing here is there's no fresh vegetables. Oh, we did have that fresh zucchini. Oh, yeah. And so in here is the bathroom. Oh, I know. The van life, life people are definitely know. like, what? You have a bathroom? I know. And it's better than one of the bathrooms we've had before. So the only problem is if you sit on the toilet, be careful because, well, that was falling. I don't know. I'm not complaining. I'm assessing. Shower. We do. I think I yeah. think it'll be fine. The, the only water thing is I, drinkable. They made a point of telling us that. The only thing I wish I had good. was a good place to sit besides the bed. And it comes with our own little diary to write down all of our thoughts and feelings, aka the guest book, and our own little team bro stamp so that we can stamp our credential. <laughs> Oh, 